Tuesday, Yelly explaining how she was a relentless bully. What heard too late? Police think Chip happened plotting any connection with the 15-year-old chef. September 7th, 2012. A 15-year-old girl uploads a video to YouTube documenting her ongoing struggle with cyber harassment and blackmail being done at the hands of an unnamed individual. Throughout the video, not a single word is spoken. Instead, the teen tells her story through dialogue written on paper cards, flipping through them one by one, painting a picture of the traumatic abuse she was living through. Just over one month later, she would be dead, as a direct result of that very harassment. The story of Amanda Todd is one of the most heartbreaking across all of YouTube, with the case sending ripples not only across the site, but across the world as well, with the fallout still being felt to this very day. And from this case, a light was briefly cast on one of the darker corners the internet has ever seen, momentarily illuminating a community that was never meant to be seen by the public eye, with a rabbit hole even more bizarre than anything we've covered on this channel before. And today, we're diving down to its very depths. With your anchor person, Doris Marmy, and welcome to The Daily Pepper. Happy hunting. Before we dive into this incredibly dark topic, I chose not to do a sponsor on this one as it just didn't really feel right. But if you wanna support the channel, I do have a Patreon page that offers some exclusive benefits. For example, less censored versions of videos like the one you're watching right now. Or you can just go over and check out the new ghost hunting channel that myself and Nexpo started called Nick and Ryan. We've got a brand new video dropping at the end of this month and then a ton more already filmed and ready to go after that. So there will be lots of content coming very soon. Links to both of these will be in the description. And with that, Let's get back to the video. The story begins in the early days of the internet, a time when, due to the general public's lack of understanding of this new online world, moderation was at its most primitive and nefarious activity ran rampant, with many of the worst examples coming from the dawn of live streaming. Back then, streams and their associated chats were almost entirely unregulated, leading to them becoming a cesspool of all sorts of degeneracy, and it's within one of these very sites where Amanda's torment would begin. It happened on a website called Blog TV, where Amanda had logged in one evening at the age of 13 to the tune of 200 viewers, and it was here that she would be pressured to eventually flash the camera with the whole chat cheering her on, a decision that she would regret not only in the moment, but for the remainder of her life. Lurking in the chat room was a man under the alias of Tyler Boo, who had been waiting for that very opportunity to grab a screenshot and recording of this young girl in her most vulnerable moment, before immediately turning around and using that image as blackmail in an attempt to leverage it for more private performances. It was a demand that Amanda refused, though truthfully, it wouldn't have mattered anyway as Tyler would turn her world into a living hell of online harassment, with a photo and video being sent to all of her friends, acquaintances, and family members. It got so bad that on multiple occasions, her entire family would be forced to move, though this was of no use, as Tyler's evil crusade persisted. Every new school, every person she interacted with, would eventually be met with the content from that fateful stream. Amanda could never outrun him. And with nowhere left to turn, she would take up drinking and drug use just to cope. Until eventually, on October 10th, 2012, she just couldn't take it anymore. The story of Amanda Todd is a complex, tragic tale, with many factors ultimately playing a role in her untimely passing, with none being more prominent than her harasser. And with her video gaining immense virality following her passing, all eyes were on Amanda's case, with the big question being, who is Tyler Boo? A question that leads us to a particularly disturbing discovery and today's main topic. As to unmask this abuser, we have to first recognize that he wasn't alone, but rather was part of one of the most bizarre and deranged communities ever uncovered on the internet. With Amanda's story making headlines, Canadian authorities quickly began work on their investigation, dedicating a team of detectives to unmask the man behind the Tyler Boo alias. And there, it's likely that they discovered that the crimes Tyler had committed were far more common than you would imagine. Back then, Tyler was what is known as a capper, 
Someone who prowls live streams of young women and men across the internet, egging them on into performing some type of lewd act. And upon convincing them to perform said act, these cappers would then take screenshots or recordings, also known as caps, immortalizing the moment in an image or short video. For some cappers, this is where their involvement ends, but for many others, it goes much deeper. Once in possession of the caps, they will then use this as blackmail against the victim in order to further extort them, which is exactly what Tyler Boo had done to Amanda. And she wasn't alone. Back then, this kind of stuff happened on a freakishly regular basis, with hundreds, even thousands of cappers operating on a given night, with their list of victims being essentially immeasurable. Victims who had their lives completely and utterly destroyed by these malevolent outside forces that forbade them from ever speaking out. And these forces rarely operated alone. In reality, many of these cappers were closely intertwined within a community of individuals sharing this common practice, many of whom shared techniques, caps, and genuine online connections with each other. And as dark as this all may seem, their actual doings are somehow even worse than you could fathom. A fact that would only be fully understood and laid out on a silver platter upon the discovery of an internet-based program known as the Daily Capper. Happy Father's Day, Cappers and Camerports. Welcome to the Week in Review of the Daily Capper. The short form program began its run here on YouTube back on June 20th, 2010, and continued airing weekly for over a year, with each episode having a runtime of roughly five minutes, primarily featuring this uncanny host in her robotic voice. And if she looks vaguely familiar, you might recognize her, or even the layout in general, as having come from the old HBO series Crash Box, an educational program made for children, which features an eerily similar segment called Distraction News. Distraction News, with your anchor person, Dora Smarmy. Good evening, I'm Doris Marmy, and welcome to Distraction News, where we give you the news and then ask you five questions about what we've just reported. But The Daily Capper was a much different show, as its creators stole the imagery from Crashbox and dubbed over it with this off-putting text-to-speech in order to tell the top weekly stories from the world of capping, with the channel's description reading, the capping world is a world that is unknown and mysterious to some, but really there's nothing mysterious about it. The Daily Capper is here to report week by week what goes on in the capping world. The page is almost like a time capsule, preserving the wrongdoings of this otherwise obscure community and putting it all out in the open. And because of this, investigators were understandably immediately drawn to the program as it quite literally documented all of the highlights in the capping community, even discussing some of the group's major players and victims at the time that Tyler Boo had been harassing Amanda. And thus began their deep dive, and ours as well, into the Daily Capper. And what better place to start than at the very beginning? We are halfway through the year and what better way to spend 365 days than on your computer screen looking for camera quotes? Despite what others think, summer is not the time to go outdoors swimming being with friends. Rather, it is a time for girls and boys to turn their computers on and get dirty. The show opens on a jarring note, with its creator being so crass that some might mistake this as a work of satire, though sadly this is far from the case, which becomes evident after only a few minutes when the tone is set for just how disturbing the Daily Capper was going to be. These are some highlights from this past week. Nicole 34 went to Tiny Chap and exposed her 15-year-old. She was later heroed and blackmailed by Doc Holliday. Throughout the episode, multiple stories are told about what the capping community had been up to, with the host referring to the accusation of these caps as epic wins, a common phrase throughout the capping community, a true indicator of the time period in which the show had aired. But what makes this all the more chilling was that each of the girls that had been featured on the show were minors, with the creator making sure to mention their ages, like a 15-year-old and even a group of 13-year-olds. Let's start with this past Thursday. Epic win was delivered in the form of four 13-year-old girls from Blog TV Jr. and all for a room of 300. A hero went on cam and streamed their video for them. These girls remain the most talked about girls in the capping world. With these children bearing the brunt of the community's blackmail that week, it was all laid out in black and white, 
not only did this one episode alone prove the existence of the capping community, but it also showed us a glimpse into how they operate, who they truly are, and just how remorseless they can be. It's truly unlike anything I've ever seen on the internet, a group so clearly committing wrongdoings, yet so shamelessly airing it out. And I truly believe that whoever was behind the Daily Capper never meant for this show to leave their little bubble. With the very first episode alone, including callbacks and past references to the capping community, with no added context being given. From Blog TV Jr. went to Tiny Chat once again. If you remember, she has been to Tiny Chat before. One thing that has not changed, every post Coke makes gets deleted or banned. Showing us that A, the community had been around long before the Daily Capper, and B, that the viewers were expected to have prior knowledge of events from within the community, making it apparent that the program was made solely for involved cappers, which is likely why it comes off as so unapologetic, especially as the episodes go on, as things only devolve further from here. Welcome cappers and camp to this special July 4th edition of the Daily Capper and what a week it has been. Just two weeks later, the Daily Capper would feature a story about a 12-year-old who had fallen victim to a capper, with said capper turning around and using the cap as blackmail to force the girl into <laughs> himself along with Razor and this guy. Blackmail the girl to drink her own on this site. A move that was celebrated by the host, as the Daily Capper didn't just highlight the best caps of the week, but also the best instances of blackmail, with the host making it very clear throughout the program just how much he appreciated the art of blackmail. It's a whole different level of disturbing, yet somehow the show manages to one-up itself with ease every single week, as the ages of their victims dipped lower and lower, to the point where the host was highlighting a cap. This past Friday, many pressured a 12-year-old black girl with her 8-year-old sister to seriously an 8-year-old taken from an 8-year-old child. Which brings up a glaring note about this community. All the victims I've mentioned so far have been drastically underaged, and that's no coincidence, as virtually all the caps highlighted are mentioned to have come from minors, while those obtaining the caps were generally far older, meaning that a key pillar of this community wasn't just exploitation and blackmail, but pedophilia as well. And to truly hammer this point home, the host even refers to cam girls above the age of 18 as retired. This is also the only place you can see Charmin or Dog and Panther Moose. So I guess it's also a camp retirement home. It's impossibly grim. And though I feel the examples given prior go a long way in explaining what the Daily Capper was all about, I think the host manages to encapsulate just how vile their own show was in this one little segment. Now a lot of people wonder exactly what capping is really like. While it's hard to explain every aspect in such a short period of time, some people have gone as far as to describe it as an underground version of Girls Gone Wild. Of course, there are a lot of differences between capping and Girls Gone Wild. For one, there are no blackmailers on Girls Gone Wild. But then again, those girls know they're going to have their videos shared all over the world. While girls on the internet will cry when they get recorded, that is a huge difference between capping and Girls Gone Wild. Plus they have to ask for permission before they use videos. And they have to be 18 or over. Complete opposite to what goes on here. By this point, it's clear that both the community and the host of the Daily Capper are completely irredeemable. And despite some attempts by the creator to project a more neutral stance by making disparaging comments towards the community and thankfully not actually showing this was, in reality, just an attempt to slide by what little regulation existed on the site back then. And a feeble one at that, as in one case, the host even guides his community on how to obtain They got banned on Ustream and soon were blackmailed by Perso Pete to be leaving their account. If you want to know where you can get the video, just message the person who blackmailed them love ya shawty on YouTube. And on top of that, all throughout the show, the host celebrates the depravity within their community. And not just in a figurative way, but in a literal one as well.
starting from before their first program would even air, The Daily Capper hosted the Capper Awards, an Oscar-like program made to celebrate the community's accomplishments throughout the year, with awards being given for such categories as Campsite of the Year, Cam Horror of the Year, Hero of the Year, and most chillingly, Blackmailer of the Year. This annual show first premiered on a separate YouTube channel back in 2009 and encapsulated everything wrong with this community. The arrogance, the deranged beliefs, the sense of pride. As just when you think this show can't get any worse, it goes ahead and does something like this. With the sheer size of this community being put on full display, as it was mentioned that over 4,000 votes were cast for just one category alone, at a time before the Daily Capper had even begun. And this wasn't a one-time affair either, as in 2010, the show would return, this time being made into a full program in the styling that we're now used to. Welcome Cappers and Cappers to the official 2010 Capper Awards voting video. Here we will go over the awards and the nominees. Black Mailer of the Year. This one is for the purpose of the internet. Again, many of the same disturbed categories remained, with the most prominent being Blackmailer of the Year, which, following community voting, would be awarded to a user named Cody1206, who gained notoriety following his harassment of a young girl named Peyton. Currently on Blog TV Jr., a girl named Peyton is being blackmailed every day by her mom Cody1206. So, as usual, with every blackmail, Peyton will give in to every request until Cody gets tired of her months from now and releases all her videos. The situation sounds all too familiar to Amanda's, and not only did the capping community know the full extent of her torment, they celebrated it at an award show. And if this all wasn't bad enough, especially considering how Amanda's story would turn out, the host had this to say in a prior episode in regards to a young girl who suddenly disappeared after being harassed by this very community. According to her Twitter, she ran away. Other sources have said she committed. Where for she is now, we won't remember next week. The parallels to the way this community operates and the story of Amanda Todd are extremely noteworthy, and it's not hard to see why investigators gravitated towards the Daily Capper being somehow involved in her death. After all, most of these cappers seem to be in a tight-knit group. However, there was one major reason for investigators to train their attention onto the Daily Capper, and it's a particularly devastating one. Merry Christmas Cappers and Camp Holes to the December 19th edition of the Daily Capper. Meanwhile, another girl from Block has been talked about a lot this week. Announcing Amanda. On December 19th, 2010, the Daily Capper would air a segment mentioning an up-and-coming target for their community with that child being 13-year-old Amanda Todd. In the show, the host states that she was extremely active on campsites and that she was being talked about quite a bit in the capping community. The ties to Amanda weren't just conjecture, it was proven right there in the footage. She said she has been IP banned from Blog TV and ended up moving to Wicked Camp Chat to sing like she used of Yuli does. As coincidentally, the show just so happened to coincide with the exact time frame that Amanda's harassment had begun. She had been trapped by this community, grasped firmly in their clutches, and with the Daily Capper being so intertwined in this world of capping, it seemed all but certain that one of its members had been the culprit behind her torment. But who? Who was Tyler Boo? Well, despite investigators likely believing that they were close to their big break while sifting through this disturbed online world, they actually wouldn't be the ones to break the news of this man's identity. And instead, answers came out of nowhere in a twist that somehow makes this story even more bizarre. Dear citizens of our nation, we have brought this announcement forwards solely for the purpose of releasing Amanda Todd's Punisher's identity. Below you will find a URL to the man's docs in there. You will see various information about said person.
before the police could even finish their investigation, Anonymous, the world-renowned hacking organization, would take it upon themselves to uncover Tyler Boo's identity, with their results finding him to be a major player in the capping community, a user by the name of Cody1206, aka 2010's Blackmailer of the Year. In the program crowning Cody1206, it mentioned how he abused a young girl named Peyton, a previously discussed victim who suffered similar harassment to Amanda. And with this notion, Anonymous dug deeper into the man until they were able to prove that this same account was in constant contact with Amanda and had supposedly been streaming her cap on this account for the whole world to see. And to add even more to Cody's rap sheet, he was supposedly already in the process of being charged with sexual assault on a minor Anonymous had found their guy, and upon confirming this among themselves, they would publish this video including his full docs, with all of his private information being leaked to the whole world, with his real name turning out to actually be Cody. And just like that, the internet's number one villain was unmasked. But there was just one issue. Anonymous actually got it wrong. And when I say wrong, I mean they were completely off. As it turns out, the phone numbers and addresses belonged to entirely different people, and the birthday they provided for Cody was off by over a decade. And to somehow make it even worse, it would later be confirmed that Cody wasn't even Tyler Boo. And upon the conclusion of the official police investigation, it would be revealed that Amanda's harasser was actually a 44-year-old Dutchman by the name of Aiden Coben, a notorious online predator known to have almost 100 different Facebook accounts in which he used for capping, with a man racking up an extremely long list of victims throughout the years, including Amanda, who he had tormented constantly for three long years leading to her passing. And though Cody did get caught in the crossfire here, I still have no sympathy for him, as he was undoubtedly a known capper in the community, and one of their most celebrated as well. And to make it even worse, it's believed that Cody and Amanda were actually friends, or at least Cody was pretending to be her friend, while at the same time, he was actually showing and sharing her caps regularly, meaning that he too was guilty for the harassment that Amanda was receiving. But despite this story being all over the place at this point, when it was all said and done, the case was finally solved, and some justice was served for Amanda, with Aiden going on to receive a prison sentence of 13 years. But that doesn't mean our story is totally finished, as whatever happened to the Daily Capper? Strangely, in early 2011, a full year before Amanda's passing, the show would come to an unceremonious end with no real rhyme or reason being given. Shortly before this, it's known that the creator was dealing with issues on YouTube, likely due to improving moderation, causing the show to be kicked from the site and moved to other various websites like Daily Motion, where it can still be found to this very day. However, following the Capper Awards for 2010, it seems like everything just kind of stopped. And it wasn't just the channel that went silent either. Alongside the show itself was an associated website called thedailycapper.com, which featured recaps and updates from the weekly episodes, and even including what seems to be a monthly downloadable magazine of sorts, which included God knows what. With this website and its services also ceasing around this very same time, and on top of this, there was even a separate YouTube channel run by the owner of the Daily Capper called The Capper Cartoons, which included animated stories about well-known cappers. And strangely, this page also came to a halt without any given reason. One day, it all just kind of ended, and we have no idea why. Perhaps something had scared the creator off, or maybe they just moved to a more secretive location. But either way, the accounts had been dead for well over a year leading to Amanda's death, marking the end of the Daily Capper for good. Or so we thought. Welcome to another edition of The Daily Capper. We just wanted to help provide a few more details to the recent Amanda Todd tragedy. Out of nowhere, during Amanda's investigation, when the national spotlight was flashed on the long-defunct show, The Daily Capper would return for just a single episode to try and push the blame on Cody for the harassment of Amanda as the show had aired right after Anonymous had dropped their video. 
But what makes this episode in particular so disturbing is the fact that it shows proof that not only had the Daily Capper interacted with Amanda, but also that Amanda had interacted with them. As most of you know, we did a report on Amanda Todd during the time this tragic series of events began occurring. We are able to confirm the timeline in which this all began, as well as a background and information on those involved. There is one thing we can confirm about Amanda. On January 4, 2011, she commented on our video report, in which she was featured, detailing how she was being blackmailed. She states that she did in fact contact the police about her situation. Obviously, they were of no real assistance. In a bizarre attempt to clear their name, the Daily Capper aired a comment that Amanda had left under their video, where they had initially mentioned her as being a new up-and-coming target. And it was there she wrote, It's Amanda here. I'm getting blackmailed and the cops are out looking for the guy that posted the video of me flashing to all my family members and friends because I didn't do stuff with him on cams. Put that in your news. People are also getting charged, but the site is shut down. The host would try to spin this in a way that blamed the police for failing to stop Amanda's harassment while posing as the good guys in this situation. Though overtly, this only proved that the Daily Capper did in fact know about Amanda's torment and did nothing until she was already gone. This would be the final episode ever aired of the Daily Capper. And with that, the creator and all his friends fell back into their dark corners like snakes retreating into their holes, leaving the capping community, which was once so public and prominent, to essentially dissipate. But what I find so frustrating is that even with the national attention this program received, its creator has still never been identified, despite them, in my opinion, having a clear hand in Amanda's death by platforming and celebrating this community for all the horrible things they were doing a community in which Aiden was most certainly intertwined with, as by the Daily Capper's own words. You'd think anyone could be her blackmailer, right? Well, at this time, there was not a single blackmailer that the capping community was not aware of. Many factors played a role in Amanda's death, and the Daily Capper was certainly one of them. And though I know this rabbit hole goes much, much deeper and would eventually lead to the identity of this criminal, it's nearly impossible to explore anything past this without running the risk of encountering which means that this is where my investigation ends. And though I'm confident that at some point, the creator of this show will be unmasked, this is something that, for the time being, will have to remain one of the many mysteries of the internet. No, this has been a daily cat for until next week. Happy hunting.